Perhaps everyone has heard the phrase appearances can be deceiving. At some point in their lives. Last year. In our village. There was a case that taught us just that. In our village. There was a small man named Jonathan. Who had dreamed of raising horses since he was a child. As he grew up. He acquired a piece of land and a few broodmares. And no one objected. In many places. Vast grasslands stretched as far as the eye could see. And since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. This farm had been vacant for a long time. Why not put it to good use? Furthermore. The children were interested in it. And if they helped with the farm. Jonathan would allow them to ride the horses. Over time. Jonathan's interest even began to yield some benefits. His little horses were purebred. Each possessing excellent racehorse qualities. Only once. A broodmare named Albasta experienced. A strange situation during childbirth. Or rather. Gave birth to a foal due to some unusual circumstances. Albasta's name, of course, was fictitious. Used on official records. So, among them. Everyone simply called this broodmare Alba. Jonathan waited a long time. Expecting his own little horse. And the buyer also waited a long time. When a strange lump was discovered in the stable. It was nothing like what was expected. Typically. A foal should be able to stand up shortly after birth. Which is one of the primary indicators of a foal's health. But this unfamiliar foal could not stand up. This brown, unfamiliar creature was extremely rare among purebred horses. A result of improper breeding practices. Horses with brown fur, black manes, and striped markings on their limbs are typically wild horses. Specifically Prowalski's horses. Jonathan waited for nearly five hours. Then drove to the location and instructed his workers to take the foal away. Albasta, the mother mare, paid no attention to her foal, and everyone understood that it seemed somewhat unhealthy. Inside the stable, people began to notice the peculiar foal, but it wasn't clear whether the workers took any action towards it or if someone had a compassionate heart and began caring for the foal. This foal had an unusual gait. Instead of the typical alternating steps of a horse's front legs, it moved both right legs forward and then both left legs. This foal was nurtured by an elderly and partially blind mare. Though it wasn't entirely clear how it was nursed. But it survived. Jonathan had acquired the blind mare at a market. And he used her to work alongside a very beautiful broodmare. The owner of the latter mare was only willing. To sell them both together or not at all. Jonathan used the elderly mare. To teach children how to groom and care for horses. And how to serve as a nurse for foals. But for Jonathan. This was just the beginning. The problem was that the birth of this foal. Had an impact on the entire stable's reputation. Before Alba. Exceptional foals had been raised here. And Panjo's appearance had all but devalued any future foals. It also affected the performance of other horses Jonathan had already sold. He hoped no one would find out that. His stable had produced such a bizarre looking horse. By the way. The brown horse also had some abnormalities. But Jonathan no longer minded, after all. It was still able to survive. The most crucial thing now was to ensure that. This oddity didn't jump around when potential buyers came to see the horses. Every family can be said to have some unconventional members. And Panjo was one of those. Whenever someone came to the stable. It would hide. As if understanding something had happened. Trying to remain silent. And if possible. Not make a sound. However. It had one weakness. And that was apples. For apples. It would almost sell its soul. It could perform any little trick. 
even unprepared. So, the children liked it very much and tried to have fun with it. As the horse grew, its humpback became less pronounced. Most likely because it wasn't really humpbacked. Just had some unique features. Its neck was short and stocky. And being a horse. It was very fond of a young mare. Brown tried to escape to her side as quickly as possible. But Jonathan's gate was already closed. He understood that this horse had nothing to do with him. So he ordered his workers to take good care of the humpbacked horse. Or else he would consider trading it for food. Despite already having a whole herd of humpbacked horses. It seemed like he was still not satisfied. Now. Let's go back to the events of last year. A granddaughter from the city paid her first visit to our forest ranger. Whom she had never visited before. But suddenly. She came. There had been some kind of tragedy there. The forest ranger had quarreled with his son. And they hadn't communicated since his son went to the city. His son got married and had a daughter. And the forest ranger didn't attend the wedding. And had never seen his own granddaughter. Now. In his lonely old age. The forest ranger seemed afraid of dying alone. So he decided to forget the past grievances and reach out to his son. They seemed to reconcile. And in the first summer after reconciliation. His 15 year old granddaughter came to visit her grandfather. Breathing fresh air. Drinking fresh milk. And eating apples. This modest girl hardly ever went out. And didn't make friends with the young people in the village. She wandered between the homes of various neighbors. Until she reached the forest ranger's house. She sat down and talked with them. Drinking a cup of tea. Soon after. People began to notice thefts in the village. Or someone losing money, jewelry. Or household icons from their wallets. And most importantly. There were no strangers around. Some began to accuse others of being the thief. But there were no suspicious characters. Even though our Brown. Although Burley. Was also clever and resourceful. He managed to slip out of his enclosure a few times. Possibly overhearing the stable boys talking about the village thefts. And decided to conduct his own investigation. Of course. What he was really interested in was the broodmare he so eagerly desired. These farmers had caught brown horses on his ranch multiple times. But they didn't inform Jonathan. This was a pity because the humpbacked horse was still a favorite among the children. Then suddenly, the angry owner sent it to a meat processing plant. In any case, this was the secret life of everyone in the village. Panjo continued to play the role of a detective. Roaming the village. Now you understand why the men concealed their adventures. But the thief was still sneaking around. Not caught. Then one day. People heard screams on the village street. Evidently from a girl. Our tough girls usually didn't scream. Perhaps they didn't know how to scream. Then the screams turned into alarms. And the old granny and household kids jumped up. Witnessing the scene. The forest ranger's granddaughter was a beauty. But now she was covered in mud. With disheveled hair. Jonathan rushed over and exclaimed. What are you doing here? He chased away the horses. While the villagers watched in disbelief. The forest ranger's granddaughter lay in the mud. Surrounded by scattered jewelry. Exactly like the missing items, she opened her bag, which contained icons and coins. And then she headed to the fishing pond. Well, do you have any relatives? Everyone started blaming the forest ranger. It's like he raised her himself. In the detention center, the young woman eventually decided to visit her grandfather in the village with her classmates. She knew her grandfather had never seen her. So she pretended to be her own grandfather's granddaughter. And arrived early. 
hoping to make some extra money. So, where's Panjo? Jonathan yelled loudly. Using his nickname for the first time in his life, before that. They only called him Humpback. People began searching. And Panjo had already reunited with the mare he loved. Leaning against a tree for support. They didn't notice him taking the horse away. But they didn't blame him. Instead, they ordered a year's supply of apples as a reward for his alertness. Everyone in the village promised to give him half of their apple harvest. So he immediately had a year's worth of food supply. Meanwhile, he cared for the forest ranger's granddaughter. And then her real granddaughter arrived. The thief had originally been her classmate. Knowing she would come to visit her grandfather. So she pretended to be her own grandfather's granddaughter. And arrived early. She hoped to make extra profit from the family gathering. But because she was a minor, she was also sent to a juvenile detention center. Which her parents didn't mind. So, the reality for our Kauri and Panjo was quite different. Panjo was not a lady but just took leisurely strolls by his beloved mare. And as a result, he ended up with three more beloved Mares. All of these Mares gave birth to foals. Not brown but black. And these beautiful, strong, and noble foals were a breed of beauty never seen in the world. They became ancestors of the same type of horse. And so, our brown humpbacked horse became the progenitor of Jonathan's entire dynasty of black horses. This is the lesson of appearances can be deceiving. This ordinary and ugly horse eventually proved itself to be clever and a carrier of these exceptional genes. While that beautiful and modest girl, whom no one suspected, turned out to be a full-fledged thief. That's the story. Thank you for listening to the entire tale. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the follow button so you don't miss out on new videos. Wishing you all the best. Animals showing emotion can be unexpected. The weeping mother bear took the man to her dying cup. But what the bear did later really shocked Kyle's love of nature. As a child, he enjoyed hiking and watching animals at the zoo near his home. And he even studied to become a veterinarian. And now he can help animals whenever he wants. Being able to treat pets and even some larger animals is an amazing experience. He was even able to go to the zoo and work with some of the larger animals he used to see as a child. It's a perfect cycle. But working as a veterinarian can also be very difficult. He will love the animals around him most of which he has seen since childhood. But he couldn't help all the animals all the time. Sometimes he tried his best but couldn't save them. He knows he should probably learn to maintain an emotional distance from the animals in his care. But he just can't. Every time he has terrible results. He will be very sad. But then he would still go to the next patient. And again he cared about them the way. He always cared for all the animals in his care. After working as a veterinarian for several years, he realized he needed a place where he could go to rest and recover. He loves hanging out with his friends in the city. But that's not the same as really taking a break and replenishing when he's stuck. To do this, he needs to go back to the way he relaxed as a child, back to nature. He was able to take a few hikes close to the city. But none were long enough for him to really relax. He's done a good job. So he decides to reward himself with a cabin in the woods. It's not connected to a lot of land. But it borders a national park. That means he has plenty of room for long hikes. Since it is a national park. No one will build anything on the land. He will always go out with his little shelter. He can sit on his porch and watch the birds and hawks in the sky. And even watch some deer and other animals pass by the door. This is exactly what he needs. You can't hear any horns or other city noises here. 
all he hears are animals and the sounds of nature. When he decided to head to the woods, he had a particularly long week. He had just put his handbag in the cabin, took off his overalls, put on his hiking boots, and then he grabbed an apple and was ready for a walk. As he chewed, he breathed in the fresh air and listened to the distant sound of the river. His heart felt like it had been beating too fast for days. But now everything was slowing down. And he could start thinking clearly again. When he had been on the road for a while. He saw a bear blocking his way. It was some distance away from him. But he knew he needed to keep it at a distance. But the bears had different ideas. She came over to him. Kyle stepped back slowly, looking at her out of the corner of his eye, and at the same time going back in the direction he came from. He knew better than to try to run away. But the bear kept coming towards him. At this time, another move caught Kyle's attention. Next to the bear, a cub emerges from the woods, making the situation even more dangerous. A mother bear can be more aggressive than a single bear. And he needs to be careful. The bear still moved forward. And Kyle understood that retreating was no use. He had to try a different approach. With his arms up high. He tried to look taller. Kyle made as much noise as he could. Stomping and yelling. Hoping the brown bear wouldn't come near him again. But something really weird happened. She didn't do what he expected at all. He had experience caring for bears at zoos. So he saw other problems. The bear didn't retreat the way he expected. And she didn't give any indication that. She would engage in the aggressive chase-like behavior he expected. It was one of the strangest animal encounters he's ever had. She sat down in the forest with her cub crawling around her. But it looked like the mother bear was crying. She looked completely defeated. It touched Kyle's heart. And he knew he was taking a big risk. But he was getting closer and closer to the bear. Is she hurt? It looked like she was desperate. But he didn't see her display any behavior. Despite his experience, Kyle was at a loss and could only use his intuition to figure out what the bear needed. As he came nearer, the bear stood up. But instead of coming towards him, she started walking towards the river. She looked back behind her. As if asking him to follow. Curious about her strange behavior. Kyle had to follow. And it does look like she's asking for help. Helping animals was his life's work. And if it could help her. He couldn't help it. Bear doesn't even seem to notice. When her baby starts running around Kyle and trying to befriend her. Fully focused on her destination. She led him to the river. Which was almost full of fishing nets in the middle. The bear walked towards it. Kyle doesn't understand why she's so interested in the net at first. But then it starts moving and the other cub is completely entangled in it. Whenever water flows through the net. The baby bear will be submerged. It looked like the bear had tried to pull the net away. But she was unable to free her cub due to the tangled mess of the net. She needs human help to save her baby. This is what she so desperately wants to communicate with Kyle. There is not much time left. The little bear has become unresponsive. And he needs to rescue the little bear. He didn't bring anything. And he didn't have a knife to cut the net. And he didn't have time to run home to get one. When he came back. It was too late to save the bear. He had to find another way. He ran down the bank. Checked all the stones. And found a rock with sharp edges and jagged edges. Then he swam quickly to where the cub was in the water. He cut the rope of the fishing net. The process took a while and left his hands bleeding and sore. But he couldn't stop. There was finally enough room for the cub. To free himself from the tangled net. Kyle pulled him out and swam him to the bank. Followed by his anxious mother. Little Bear didn't move. 
But Kyle made up his mind. He began to press on the bear's chest. And finally. It began to breathe. Exhausted. Kyle sat aside. The little bear stood up on trembling legs. And ran towards his mother and brother. Mom hugged him tightly. After a while. When she was sure he was perfectly fine. She let him play with his brother. And the little family went back into the forest. When Kyle finally regained his strength. He started walking home. He walks away from what just happened. He may never see the family again. But he is very happy and has a great story to tell all his friends. He went home and took a hot shower. The little bear may be small. But he's still heavy. Kyle felt his muscles burn. But now he can rest. The next morning. He sat on the porch drinking coffee. After wrapping up his adventurous excursion the previous day. He was content to sit back and relax. But he couldn't believe what happened next. He was taken aback when the bear. And her cub came into view again. The bear's family had come to visit him. For a long time after that. Every time he was in the cabin in the woods. The mother bear and the cubs he had rescued would visit him. Thanks for watching again. Join us for more inspiring stories.